Hello everybody, this is Ketchup here, and I'm doing something today that's a little bit different. So, Mortal Kombat Deception, a 3D game that everyone has such fond memories for, for good reason, you know, it's a fantastic game, tons of content, decent cast of characters, and the 3D age really kind of expanded the lore and the universe side of Mortal Kombat, but I don't need to get into that today. What I want to talk about is that modding in Mortal Kombat has become a lot more prominent over recent years, and it's various tools, various character skin swaps and stuff like that. I think there's a lot of that happening in Mortal Kombat 1 on the PC right now, you know, and that's very common for loads of different games. However, there is one particular modder in the MK space called Ermaka. And Ermaka has done countless different mods for various older Mortal Kombat games, particularly the 3D era, um, where he has essentially been swapping out a bunch of different tools to allow you to use NPC characters and normally like single player only content. And it's kind of expanding things a little bit and from a just pure for fun side of things, that's fantastic because it's just a new way to experience something truly single player, but you can play it yourself or you can play it against other people, especially when it comes to NPC characters. What you're looking at right now is the basic roster. If I press L3 on this version of the game, we unlock a bunch of different characters. That is because the version of the game I'm currently playing is called Ultimate Mortal Kombat Deception. And what this has done, courtesy of Ermaka, is adding a bunch of extra content that the base game didn't have. And the first step was adding the Unchained exclusive characters. So Katana, Jax, Shao Kahn, Frost, Blaze, Goro. These characters were in Deception on the handheld, but not on base game. If you're counting Goro and Shao Kahn, they were on the GameCube, but that's a different story. The next step that Ermaka took was adding characters from Deadly Alliance into the game as fully-fledged characters. So Sonya, Dramin, Kung Lao, Quan, Shang Tsung, Cage, Natara has not stopped there, has now started to add characters from Armageddon, which was a game that came out after Deception. So I have no idea how he's done this, but he's added Sector, he's added Serena and Rain. This is for me what really sparked my interest because Sector is in a 3D Mortal Kombat game that isn't Armageddon, something I never thought I would experience ever. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into training and I'm going to kind of show you what this version of the character is because considering this is a mod, like this is not the actual game, I'm really impressed with what Ermaka has been able to do and I figured I would just kind of show you and of course I picked the wrong stage because Falling Cliffs, while it's an amazing stage, is not appropriate for training mode. It's far too small. And while we're loading in, let's quickly chat about that costume, the Cyrax costume. That's actually something that Sector has worn in the past in an official capacity. You had the Game Boy Advance Tournament Edition, uh, which was a kind of like a, a handheld version of Deadly Alliance. And I've actually made a video covering that in the past. There was a different version that actually had Sector wearing Cyrax's costume. So the costume on the right is actually something that he's worn officially before. So that's a nice little extra feature, I suppose. And his alternate is his primary in Armageddon, the one I'm currently using, which is personally one of my favorite costumes he's ever had. So big happy with that. Now let's talk about moves. Three special moves, all of which have just been constructed, you know, by Ermaka, the straight missile. This is a standard projectile, and it can actually ring out, which is always funny when that happens. So the missile's decent, high, you know, decent damage, projectile, can knock them off the stage like that. Forward, forward three is his flame burner. In this version of the game, it is actually an infinite against the wall, but it's not something that happens all the time. Uh, if I do flame burner here, and I kind of time it correctly, this is an unbreakable infinite if you time it on, like, you know, the way you should, but I'm not particularly sure how strict that is. And then his final move, something you're probably going to be expecting is the teleport punch. If I'm not mistaken, this is identical to the smoke one, because in Deception, smoke does actually have this exact move, so it kind of makes sense that Sector would have it as well, because it's his move. And now let's talk about the strings, because yes, his combos are insanely cool. He has Cyrax's ninjutsu stance, which was his hand-to-hand -hand in Armageddon. And everything is here, so the 1-1 one, one still results in a free throw. You have all of the same buttons, so 1-1-1, one, 1-1-2. One, 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 
The back one launches and allows for extensions with the 1-1. Everything that Cyrax was doing in that game, Sector is pretty much doing as well. And this works especially well for him because he has various other launches that can allow these extensions. Extensions that are made possible thanks to his second hand-to-hand, -hand, which, if I remember correctly, is a Su Hao hand-to-hand -hand in Deadly Alliance. I recognize the stance and I recognize these kind of moves. Uh, the one one two having like a grab, for example. In this game, it will be a free throw because uh, Deception introduced free throws. So if Su Hao was in this game, this would have been the exact same thing for him with whatever throw he has. And it just kind of works well because there's lots of different branching combos. And the branching combos constantly move Sector forward. And the reason that's awesome is because of his third stance. His pulse blades come back with all of the same moves. So, you know, 3-1-1. You've got his back three low. You've got his back one mid. You've got his back four, which is the sort of spinny hand thing. And back two, which launches. And when you put all of these things together, he has so many cool combos. And it's all been constructed, so it just feels really authentic. And it makes the character a blast to play. And to be honest with you, that's kind of where I want to end the basic overview. Because the next part of this video that I really want to talk about, and I will just show, is an arcade run. Because I can talk about these moves all day. Let's just do an arcade run and see what Mortal Kombat Deception Sector is really all about. All right, so editing Ryan taking over here. So we're going to be doing an arcade run and it's just a great way for me of showing off all of the new stuff that Sector can do in a live setting while at the same time showing a little bit of the extra stuff that has been modded in via Ultimate Mortal Kombat Deception. Now, the first match here is against Liu Kang and with this being arcade runs, the easier fights tend to be at the very beginning. A chance to see just a little bit of what he's doing here, a big one being the straight missile. So very very shortly after this round begins, I hit Liu Kang with a missile and immediately there's a ring out. Now it's not enough to end the round, the prison has the two different layers on it, but it's just a really nice feature for the character. And then we start to see the extended juggles as well. Liu Kang just eats it. Sorry, can't show the rest of that ring out, but you know how it is here on YouTube. But overall, Sector in this game, even though he was put together in an unofficial capacity, it's very, very unusual just how accurate to the game he feels. And I think that's like a really big one for me is that you could have just put him in this game as is and I would have believed it. If I saw this, you know, when I was a kid or something like that, I'd been like, yeah, Sector's just in the game and it's working as intended. Um, so I guess that's just a testament to, to how well Ermac has been able to put this whole thing together um, because it fits Sector's 3D game plan. Uh, that's what has made me the happiest in this game is that Sector in Armageddon was really kind of like a damage machine. Uh, he was mostly played in weapon stance because of the range and the the layers of mix-up that he has in that game. While it's not going to be a constant full combo situation, uh, he was pretty good at range and effective at those ranges. And his combos were simply a way to take his most important buttons and squeeze out higher damage than you'd expect thanks to these ex extended juggles like the parry cancels and everything else. He kind of has elements of that here. Now, Deception does not have parry cancels, but because of the two hand-to-hands having a lot of, I suppose, forward momentum, he feels just as refined. And I think that is a big, really a testament to ninjutsu as a stance. Uh, it's one of the best hand-to-hands for me in the entirety of 3D Mortal Kombat. Because in Armageddon, that's where we started to see loads of juggle potential, loads of extensions. It was very safe hand-to-hand -hand stance compared to a lot of the others. So Sector having that in this game is just a really nice fit. And as you can see, the extensions, they just keep going and it just results in fantastic damage. This is genuinely one of my favorite stages in the game. It's like, I can't even explain why. I think it has some of my favorite music, but at the same time, you'll, uh, you'll see very quickly why uh, it's one of my favorite stages outside of that. But the AI seems to be responding well to this, this extra character. I meaty the throw with the flame burner, which isn't actually real. You can duck that, and the opponent does duck that eventually. The, the higher the difficulty becomes, they start doing it more. 
But in the neutral, I mean, you're so... God, that's so sick. It's such a cool extension. I love it. And we're just going to teleport just for the fun of it. But all of these extended combos for Sector, like I said, you don't have the parry cancels of Armageddon. You have your higher damage in other ways. Most of the time, it's it's hitting some sort of launch, doing loops of Ninjutsu's 1-1. And because he has this really awesome branch combo through both hand-to-hands and it finishes with weapon, um, just feels very authentic. And it just gives you similar damage to what you were obtaining in Armageddon, just in a, a very, very different way. One big thing about this game and this version of the character is that in Deception you can backdash cancel certain buttons. So something like a ninjutsu down one or a second hand to hand down one. Uh, there are a couple of other strings I believe that you can backdash cancel as well, but it just adds that extra layer of safety. Oh yeah, by the way, <laughs> the AI wins that trade. I was fuming mate, I was absolutely fuming. I wasn't really, I was calm and collected. Until he broke that, because he denied me of my awesome combo, you know. But anyone that's ever played Cyrax and done the sort of extended combos in Armageddon uh, will feel right at home, really, playing Sector in this one. And there's the free throw from the second hand to hand. I think that's 1-1-2. Again, like I said earlier, I believe that is a stance that Su Hao had in Deadly Alliance. Uh, yeah, one shortcoming is that he has loads of highs. Those extended combo strings, quite a few of them hit high, so the opponent can actually crouch them uh, and punish you. And given its new strings, the AI kind of responds to it quite well. And you still get all of your weird whiffing situations. This is still 3D Mortal Kombat we're talking about. And one thing to point out about the, the Pulse Blades is that they do have the same weakness in this game that they have in Armageddon. Sektor's weapon stance really is his best hand-to-hand -hand in Armageddon, and it mostly comes down to the range and the overhead low game that he has. Putting those together makes him a pretty decent footsies character. The real big thing that holds him back is his lack of ability to combo into itself with all the different strings. The first hit will land, and most of the time the opponent can block. Uh, it's not a bug to do with porting the character over. Uh, it is very much a thing in Armageddon as well, so... That is unfortunately still a thing here. Now we're fighting Shu Jinko. I mean, look, I get so nostalgic looking at this character now. Especially seeing as he's so much fun to play in Mortal Kombat 1. And now I've uh, recently hit Elder God with Quan Chi in Mortal Kombat 1. I kind of want to revisit Shu Jinko again now. He's got the uh, extra 100 health. I'm always hoping for a few more changes just to make him a bit more viable and... Uh, just kicking me right in the face there to win the first round. This is when the AI starts to get a little bit tougher. So you have to start sort of tricking them a bit more. This is where backdash cancelling can really help you for arcade runs. Uh, in this instance, we can see that Shujinko is he's blocking everything. And a lot of stuff in 3D Mortal Kombat is unsafe. So in a lot of instances, the AI is either going to move read you the second you press a button and do the right button that counters yours. Or they're just going to sit and block everything, and it's the computer. They're not going to eat an overhead low mix-up, are they? They're going to wait, block, and then punish you for doing it. So you kind of have to start tricking them. Like right here, the down one into backdash cancel. Depending on the character, the backdash cancel tricks them into thinking they can punish you, and you're already at a safe distance to whiff punish their attempt. That's kind of uh, the general idea of how that works. Uh, stuck out the entire string there. Sometimes the AI does just completely chew that up. A little bit harder to do that in Armageddon because the AI likes to move read with um, parries. So they can interrupt you with a parry. Parry comes out a lot faster than you'd think. And uh, aside of the Armageddon meta that a lot of people don't do, and I guess the game really never was that alive enough for it to be prominent, is that you uh, can parry in between block strings. Quite a few block strings have parryable gaps. It's just that you see so little PvP matches of that game that it's rarely a layer that you have to reach, I suppose. And we're just trying to keep things nice and simple. We're going to get a scaled combo here. Most launchers in 3D Mortal Kombat, if they're not used on their own, they have a string before it. It will scale quite a lot. Uh, big launchers into extended juggles really is how you get the highest source of damage. So strings are easier for safety and they require less dedication, especially off an Injitsu standing one, for example. Uh, but it does come with it extra combo scaling. And there we go. <laughs> Crouches the whole sequence. 3D Mortal Kombat, I love you so much. Now, Jade kind of has a hard time in this match. I'm not going to lie. The AI starts to get more challenging as we go. Uh, she just ate everything. Like, every string, every button. I don't know what was going on there, but... 
It was uh, probably my most comfortable game in the entire arcade run. And some of you have noticed it's, it's not a full arcade run, like from start to finish. I'm chopping up the matches. Uh, it was 100% win streak. Not that that even really matters because it's AI, but uh, I'm just trying to cut out the downtime in this video so it's less loading screens and it's more games over. Try and load into the next match and we can start talking about the next game. This stage, I believe, is called the Catacombs. I think, if memory serves, this was not a stage in the original game. Uh, there was a stage in the file that was kind of just sitting around in the game code, and I believe Ermaka put work in to essentially complete this stage. Now, that's, that's what I think happened. I can't remember 100%. So if I am incorrect, then by all means, someone can uh, uh, definitely just correct me on that. It looks like it maybe should have been a conquest stage. It kind of has the small size. You've got the sort of lack of uh, intense backgrounds here. It very much looks like a conquest thing to me. But I don't remember this being in base game, and I do remember a while back uh, seeing Ermacker and some of the other 3D folks posting about this stage being kind of completed, quote-unquote. So I think that's what we're looking at right now. And I think it's sick. Like, it, it's why I love this kind of extra community effort, I suppose. Now, Ermacker has done a lot of work to, to just make this feel as authentic as he can, but it's done in such a way that it's, it's uncanny. It's just... Impressive, really, more than anything else. And we get that big old extension to beat Noob Smoke. The golden rule for them is just block. Noob Smoke is broken, but uh, they are pretty unsafe on everything they have. So against the computer, stand at a range they can't just throw you and kind of just block and wait for them to make a mistake. One thing Sector does do is destroy Onaga. I think it's just a combination of damage, speed, and the uh, branch combo he has. But... When you hit one of those Kamidogus, it does like 60% damage, I think. I don't know if Onaga is constantly trying to challenge this on hit, which is something that boss characters can do. Uh, but yeah, that string just makes complete mincemeat of him. I don't even think you'd, you'd need those Kamidogus to win. You could probably just loop that branch combo without them, and I'm certain you could still catch him and win the game. But we are hitting the end game of this, so I just want to give a huge shout out to Ermaka for creating Ultimate Mortal Kombat Deception. I will be linking uh, Ermaka's channels and socials and kind of how to get involved in this yourself, you know. So I'm going to link all of that in the description and the pinned comment and all that stuff. Thank you all so much for watching. I love making 3D Mortal Kombat content. This one's a little bit more uh, chill and casual and just, hey, my favorite characters in a different version of a game I've never played before. So I was happy to jump in, give it a go, find some cool combos and uh, report on it and let you know what I think. So cheers for checking this out. Take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next Mortal Kombat video. Goodbye.